I would be so overwhelmed thinking, oh my god, I'm so bad at this, I don't know what I'm doing, I should just quit my job because I'm never going to be as smart as these people. Hello guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about things that I wish that I knew when I was starting out my career as a software engineer. So as I'm thinking about what I'm going to be talking about, I look back on the struggles that I had when I was a junior software engineer and I noticed that a lot of other junior software engineers that I've spoken to over the past so many years have very, very similar struggles. And so I want to share with you the things that I wish that I knew when I started becoming a software engineer were completely normal and completely fine to, to do but at the time it didn't feel like they were completely normal and it didn't feel like I was able to have those feelings and that I was not cut out to be a software engineer because I had those feelings. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that it's okay to not know something. And this is something that's actually really common that and that I see a lot. A lot of software engineers that are starting out that I know of, and even software engineers that I've spoken to who aren't necessarily new in the industry, but haven't quite learned how to do this, is just to say when they don't know something. And this is really important because you can find that if, if you don't say that you don't know it, then someone's just gonna assume that you know it. And the more that they assume that you know it, the more that they're gonna start asking questions about it, the more that they're just gonna leave you to your own devices to let you start working on that area. Whereas if you're quite upfront and say, I'm not familiar with this area, does anyone have any expertise in this area? Or if you're going into an interview and you're being asked about a particular question just don't try and blag it because those things you're gonna quickly get found out and something that you don't necessarily know about but someone else in the team knows about could save you hours and hours of work whereas if you just pretend that you know it and that you can do it yourself without asking for help without getting a little bit of guidance then you're gonna end up spending a lot longer than you potentially could have so there is definitely a balance in that and it's completely fine to say I don't know something. The second thing that I want to talk about is learning gets easier and what I mean by this is when you are starting out as a software engineer there's a lot of different things that you need to learn and it can be quite exhausting and it can be quite intimidating and sure there are going to be times throughout your career that you again feel quite intimidated especially when you have to learn a completely new area. For example at the moment I'm currently learning a lot about data engineering and ETL pipelines and how to extract data and transform it and load it. And this is quite daunting for me because I haven't really done a lot of this before and so I'm learning a lot of this as I'm going. And so it's a continuous thing of learning. However, what gets easier is that you get more comfortable with learning these things and you have like that base foundation of knowledge. And because you have that base foundation of knowledge, those other things that you need to learn on top of that generally get easier to learn. If I was going into what I'm currently learning without already knowing SQL, without already knowing how pipelines work and scheduling works, that would be a lot more to learn all in one go. Which brings me on to my next point, starting small. So it's quite tempting to want to create the best and brightest website when you, you're starting out. And I think a lot of boot camps encourage this as well. They just want you to get something up and running quickly. But actually starting small and learning those incremental steps will really, really help you in your career. For example, learning how a REST API endpoint works and just starting small like with some Something like a get endpoint, a delete endpoint, a put and a patch and a post. Just being able to repeatedly understand how to do that and keep doing that with reliably and repeatedly with tests included. Those are small things that once you get that, you can then increase your knowledge to, okay, how do I get this working with different databases? How do I get this working in a more performant way? It's like a little building block where you get better and better each time. Another example of this is I see engineers thinking that they need to solve the hardest leak code problems there is, the hardest DSA algorithms that are out there. I actually recommend for my mentees to just start off with the arrays and hash maps, get familiar with doing easy questions on those and then you can maybe think to okay let's try some medium questions or actually let's try a queue based question or a stack based question after that but rather than overwhelming yourself with all these different types of DSA questions just focus on the ones that are most commonly asked and the easy 
easiest ones as well. Try and focus on them first because they're likely going to be the ones that you're going to be asked in an entry level position interview. The next thing I want to talk about is really that everyone's winging it. And so what I mean by that is when you get to a certain level, you're just constantly learning new things, always learning new things. And I remember when I was a junior engineer and I came into a conversation with the senior engineers and they would just talk so much about different things and I would be so overwhelmed thinking, oh my God, I'm so bad at this. I don't know what I'm doing. I should just quit my job because I'm never going to be as smart as these people. But actually a lot of this is just having a baseline understanding of how things work and then being able to make logical deductions from that so a lot of times people will have a very baseline knowledge of stuff but actually when you dig a little bit deeper you'll realize that they don't know as much as they're letting on and that's okay that's normal that's fine that's just something to bear in mind when starting out that usually everyone is really just winging it and they might not know as much as they're letting on which brings me to my next point confidence is key when you have confidence people believe you more when you're saying things like um 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 all the time people associate that with you not really knowing the content that you're talking about not really understanding the content and i'm really bad at it because i do it a lot and i'm trying i'm very very aware that i do it a lot and i'm trying to do it less but i am aware of it and saying um um, um and things like that doesn't necessarily mean you don't know what you're talking about but when people are looking to you for guidance they typically find and communication like that is less believable than people who struck with confidence so when you are going into something like an interview try and be familiar with the fact that saying a um, lot can sometimes reduce someone's confidence in your abilities final point which is embracing failures so one thing that I learned quite quickly is that you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in this industry very very often you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and the reason why is because you are constantly just thrown into new things you have to learn new things constantly you always have to be unknowledgeable about the things that you're currently doing because it's a continuous learning process of getting things wrong and making mistakes and getting things right sometimes but then making more mistakes and more failures and continuously trying it out and trying it out at Microsoft in my team we do a lot of research and development and so we are constantly having to try new things out and we are constantly getting failures as part of our our team and that's normal in this industry but this is what the industry is and if you want to be a software engineer you need to embrace those failures and you need to be able to be okay with the fact that you're not going to get things right all the time and actually the quicker you fail and the faster you fail and the quicker that you learn from it is how you're going to get better and that is all from me i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please can you give it a thumbs up and subscribe I post weekly content on my YouTube channel and on my blog, and I also post daily content on my LinkedIn. Thank you for watching and see you next week. 